Good morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Grubb here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering wisdom for living on this year Friday morning, rise and shine and give God the glory. And this morning here, I'm looking at a topic, a living dog is better than a dead lion. A living dog is better than a dead lion. And so welcome again to our live talk program. Hopefully at a blessed night rest and you ready to take on the challenges and grab some of the opportunities that come your way this day let us pray our father who art in heaven i thank you for the blessings of your word i thank you for the blessings of the life that you give us and for give us an opportunity dear lord to live on a better experience from day to day as you teach us various different principles dear lord in your word may you bless us dear father as we study these things and may each of us take encouragement to press on harder and more steadfast in our pursuit of life life happiness and uh, salvation may you bless us we pray for christ's sake amen so this more here i want to look at you with you at this very famous passage of scripture um if you listen to me here often you will hear me use this especially on monday mornings when i talk about motivation and i'm gonna be reading ecclesiastes ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 through 11 and my focal point most actually is um in verse 4 that's my focus for this morning here verse 4 so ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 and what i'm looking at here is a living dog is better than a dead lion a living dog is better than a dead lion so however you are however you view yourself if you view yourself as a lion god bless you it's better to be a living lion than a living dog but if you're a living dog and you're not one of those who are joined themselves to death uh you're not asleep uh, you're hearing me most of if you hear me you're alive unless life is just about to leave you uh, you're better than a dead lion. And so we want to explore that and explore um, this reality that sometimes life might not be the greatest. You might not be in the greatest position. You might not be having the most superior position or whatever. But at least you can look at it and say, you know, you're still alive, still kicking. And so let's kick better. So the evidence we experience because we accept eternal principles is the extension of life, both in time and quality. So this is one of the evidence because somebody say you believe in God. Well, our and that's why I love the way we believe the Bible because we believe the Bible as an entire book. And because of that, we're not like the rest of the mainline churches that believe the Bible because of just faith. And that's it. And the rest of the principles of the Bible is useless. For us, the principles of the Bible are real. And because they are real, it gives us a quality. It changes our quality of life. Now, we don't claim it. We, we, we live it. It's a total different experience. So we live it. And because of that, it, it extends time. It gives us extra time. And it gives us extra quality of life. You know, there's a text in the Bible that says, you know, Lord, teach us the number of days. That's what the Bible says. And the Lord says, you know, we, we get about 70. Um, but we could get longer because of strength. So unless you meet in an accident or you, you know, say you, 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 you get murdered or something. Uh, if life just keeps going on and none of these things happen to you, you find that if you follow the principles of the Bible and you live by those principles, like what we're doing, it's an automatic that like, you get more than 70. And and somebody said, well, is it a, a guarantee? Well, you know, if you were going to die at 50 because of your genes, you know, genes were not strong to live beyond 50. Um, I'm going to say that if you live the, the, the biblical message, the health message, the biblical cleanliness message and so forth, I'm easily guaranteeing um, um, as an, a, a, an estimation that 10, 5, 10 years, 15, even 20 years added. That's just the reality. So, you know, that's what I want to talk about today. You know, the, the evidence. So I'm just basically saying a living dog is better than a deadline. And my subtopic could be, so live your, you live your best living dog experience. So even if you don't have the lion experience, it's okay. You know, not everybody's going to be the lion of a tribe of Judah. There was 12 tribes, really 13, and only one was the lion of the tribe of Judah. So that's okay. But live your best living dog experience. And that's okay. You know, be one of, like one of those people. If they can't live a life of a lion, they go kill themselves. None of that. Just live your best living dog experience. That's okay. You just live as a dog here, but you live in the best experience. <laughs> so notice here, the principle is, uh, an, uh, these principles we live by, they are life extensions. You know, people talk about life extension. Man, this is, this is where it's at. 
um, both in time and quality of life. Um, this is especially true when it happens to those who are poor. Uh, so if you receive the gospel and you're poor, you're oppressed, you're beaten down, you're trodden, you're part of the minority, you're part of whatever, you can have an experience that is a great living dog experience. And somebody looking at you and say, you're a living, you're a dog. And they're like, yeah, but man, I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> So that's what you want to be. And that to me always was the test of any principle I read in the Bible or any new teaching. Um, one of the ways you know the teachings is rock solid is that the poor, when they receive it, it's a massive blessing to them. If you look at like prosperity gospel and, and grace oriented messages and seeker sensitive sermons, they don't do nothing for the poor. It's good for rich people, but it's not good for poor people. You know, when what was the test of Christ? Christ says the poor has the gospel preached to them. It's that's always been the test. Because if the gospel cannot bring deliver the captive, cannot deliver the oppressed, cannot deliver the poor, cannot make a man that is basically nothing become something, can take fishermen's fishermen and make them some of the most powerful human beings that have ever walked the face of the planet, then it ain't the gospel. It ain't the God that God claim to be god says i'm the poor man deliverer i'm the friend of the poor man and so when we talk about this type of stuff about a, a, a what you say a living dog is better than a dead lion um that's what the gospel does the gospel makes it that look even the dog that is a living when he gets the gospel inside of him is better than a lion that's the power of it you bring me any lion or you bring me a person that will be looked upon as a dog as all the Gentiles would be looked upon. And he received the gospel like the Gentiles received the gospel and Jesus walked the face of the planet when Paul preached. And the Gentiles were doing great, phenomenal, till the evildoers and the jealous and those who are in charge, they hated that because they were blessed. That was what was killing Paul. That's why Paul was kicking against the prick, the pricks because guess what happened? You know, he, he didn't have that experience, but yet he was a lion. And he was a living lion and he's looking at other living dogs and he said, man, they have a good experience. Praise the Lord. And so that's the test, the quality of life and the quantity in time and in quality of what the gospel does. And so if you're alive and here in this, you're doing better than definitely dead lions out there. Lion, you know, they always used to say the Kennedy. I can't remember which one of the Kennedy. He was a lion of the Congress or a senator or whatever. You know, but you're doing better because you're here in this presentation. You're alive. You're well. And if you're not well, you're going to get well because that's what the gospel does. It makes you well. See, money um, did not buy the result. So when you have results because of the principles of the Bible, you know money didn't buy it for you. So you know it's rock solid because money can buy you a lot of things in this life, but money can't buy you what I'm talking about here for the next hour. Can't buy you it. The principle is secured. Um by um by the uh, the lifestyle or the results are secured by the principle not by anything else see as the bible says in proverbs 3 you get wisdom why you get wisdom because when you get wisdom you get something that rubies diamond pearls um gold can't secure it is something far beyond that now wisdom can secure you diamond pearl and all these things but those things can't secure your wisdom so what do you, the bible says get wisdom so if you're a dog and you have wisdom you're doing better than somebody that has pearls because what happened you can't get that pearl out of their hand and you never have to use a gun you figure it out because that's what wisdom does so it is not just important to be a living dog but to have the best living dog experience and this is where it's at you just don't have a, 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 you just be alive. You know, he says it's better. I'd say it's better, but I think it's better to have the best living dog experience. So let's go to the text and let this text speak for itself. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, I'm going to read verse 4 through 11. The main focal again is verse 4, but I just want to read the context because the context is in the issue of life and death. But I'm going to take it a little bit further as we come to verse 11 because the verse 11 tells me to take it a little bit further you see why in a second now notice in verse 4 it says for to him that is joined to all the living there is hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion for the living know that they shall die but the dead know not anything neither have they any more 
reward, any more reward for the memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love, their hatred, their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accept thy works. Let thy garment be always white, let thy head lack no ointment, live joyfully with the wife of wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life or vanity, which he had given thee under the sun all the days of thy life, for that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hands find to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. I returned and saw on the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen it to them all. So this is our passage here very important. So notice here the passage starts off by saying, look, a living dog is better than a dead lion uh, because those who are joined to the living, they have hope. So whatever your situation is, you know, if today's Friday and you found out that the company is closing, um, there's people who get very depressed over that. Well, you know, probably it's time for you to have get a new job or go on a sabbatical because you're alive. There's people who be like, oh, my life is finished, done. Well, you know, every time I think about that, you know, I think about the bad scenario that happened to a person that financially they get ruined. I always just think about when I was younger and there were people every day, you go to school, they head into the beach and they go be on a tree, hanging out, playing dominoes, you know, eating some food. I don't know where to get money from to eat food. And they're alive. And I'm like, don't they have anything else to do? But as I got older, I realized that there's some people, if they had to live like a broke life and live a kind of a transient life, they would just go kill themselves. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, different people have different takes on life. Somebody over there, they could be broke as ever, and they're living their best life, and I can't figure out how they do it, but they do it. Somebody else, they go broke, and they decide that life is done. So we want to apply these principles, apply them more seriously, um, not to be that transient person that you know here today gone tomorrow they don't have any fixed address or anything like that but still how to press forward and know look whatever happens to me in life there's still hope if i have life most actually if i um, i'm aware that it's happening to me i'm not dead so i press on so again yes there is this issue that one thing's going to happen to us all so until that thing happen he says go ahead part of the good life is make your garments where's it verse eight there uh, well, I go to verse 7 first. Uh, he says here, um, Go that way, eat thy bread with joy. So enjoy some good food. You know, enjoy some good food. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, as, as an example that just flashed into my mind, uh, my wife had made some pasta sauce from scratch, as they say. So it was nicely seasoned. And um, then I was cooking some rice. It was a separate meal. I saved pasta sauce, froze it. So I try to nowadays freeze as much things as I can so I don't throw out as much food as I used to. And anyhow, so I froze it and then I took some of it and I was cooking some rice. And I said, you know what, I'm going to take the pasta sauce. I'm going to cook it down into the rice. Um, and so I took some of it, not all of it, and then I cooked the rice with the pasta sauce. And so it was, it was, it was good, but it wasn't great. And it was uh, very saucy, but you know, it was, you could eat it. It wasn't like a mud. <laughs> so, anyhow, so then um, this morning, I, I was gonna be like, I'm gonna smell that rice. So, what I did, I seasoned it extra, you know, because they, it, I didn't have enough seasoning in it or enough salt. So, I put some extra salt, some extra onion powder, extra oil extra all of that and I was eating it and thinking man I could eat this thing by itself it was like I'm having I guess rice 
pasta something or something. I don't know what it is. It just tasted like an Italian dish because I had extra seasoning to it. So it it is it is not anything. It's not sirloin steak. It's not any type of expensive caviar. But it was surely impressive. Um, you know, and so you you enjoy what you have. And somebody is going to eat probably some, some bottom dwellers like some lobsters or catfish. But you enjoy your thing and let them enjoy their thing. I know, you know, people can enjoy their thing, whatever is going to, their results going to be their results. And no problem. So you eat your bread with joy, right? You drink your wine with a merry heart. You enjoy your life. And so somebody said, yeah, but there's people out there that they're depressed because they're not a lion. That's not none of your business. You know, you we not we don't choose which family we're born into, which community we're born into, which country we're born into, who are our friends sometimes, because our friends sometimes are just people who end up being in the same classroom as us. And that wasn't our choice. That just time and chance as it says in the end. But still you make the effort to make the best of what you have. And if that can't work, then you go there and go make life the way you can. As I say, there's a lot of things that happen to us by chance. But there's things that happen that you're going to have to go there and create your own reality. You know, and Joy makes the statement that, it, you know, chance or circumstances and other happenstance in life does not bind us so heavily that we can't shape our future. You know, we have choices. And we could say, well, woe is me. Something bad happened to me or certain opportunities didn't come my way. Well, you could create your own opportunities. You go seek new opportunities. And time sometimes is just a matter of time before things break out and you get your blessing. Um, so notice here, eat thy bread and joy. For God know it and accept thy works. Let thy garment always be white. See, I'm not one of those people who believe that in whatever situation you, you're in, go ahead and wash your clothes. Go ahead and... Um, Get less clothes, but get a few nice clothes. Get some cotton. So, you know, you put it on your your body. It feels good. Make sure your sheet is washed on a regular basis. So when you lay in the bed, you feel, oh, it feels so good. Um, that's okay. Now, th those experience has nothing to do with if you're a lion or a dog. If you're rich or you're poor. If you're famous or not famous. It just has to do with enjoying the life that you have. The quality. Get some quality of life. Whether, whatever is going on. To me, I always believe, and even recently I was talking about to somebody about this. You know, a lot of people as they get older, they will live in a broken down, dilapidated building. I prefer to live in an apartment that is clean, neat, small, decent, than live in a home that is falling apart on me. That is like I'm in a movie and I'm trying to, you know, just to make it from one end of the building to the other. It's like a rush, you know, it's like a, a action movie. Because we don't know what's going to fall, if a beam going to fall, a sheet rock is going to fall on me. If the, 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 somebody told me, I was talking to somebody, they told me that they they get bitten in a house by a bat. And I'm thinking, how can you get bitten in a house by a bat? I didn't want to ask, because I wanted to ask, what's the state of your house that a bat would get in there and bite you? Um, that That has to be not good. So when you look at life, you like... You know, that I'll prefer just be, I'll prefer rent from somebody. Rent a room for a few hundred dollars. And, and, and at least the bats can stay away. Live, live a, if you're going to live a living dog experience, at least live a quality living dog experience. So he, notice he didn't just say the, the, the living dog. Because you might say, why am I getting this idea of living the best living dog experience? Because the living dog is better than a deadline. But he goes on to advise you and I. To go ahead and have clean white garments. If you're going to wear a robe, you know, don't wear the robe outside that you eat fruits in that has stain on it. That's the robe for the inside. And if you can afford it, even the robe inside look good. You know, don't wear tore up clothes and stuff like that. You know, it's okay. You have one life to live. You don't have to live the life crazy. But you can live a quality of life. You know, I'm one of those people who believe that I shouldn't be living in a two-star um, dwelling day to day for my housing, a one star and a two star do dwelling, and go on four star and five star vacation. I'm just not one of those people who believe that. I believe it would be better for me to never go on a vacation, uh, never go to a five star or four star resort, 
and live in a three or four star house. And if I can afford it, a five star. You can have a five star dwelling or a four star dwelling. And it's no more than a thousand five hundred or even a thousand square feet. You could actually have a tiny home and it's so well appointed that it's, it, it might be tiny, but it's a five star appointment. And so for me, it's just living your best, as I say, living dog experience. And I really believe that. I, I'm, 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 I'm in that place in my experience. We have learned that often what people look at as so great and they're looking at the lions and they say, look at that lion. He, he has a yacht and stuff like that. Well, you know, I'd prefer just go buy yourself a good kayak and go kayak and enjoy your kayak. That's simply what it is. And have that, you know, if, if, if you're, you're artistic, go ahead and paint something on it. You know, decorate it, stylize it, make it look great. And someone answers, so what is that? That's my, my yacht. My yacht. <laughs> and that's it. That's all I can have. And you live your best experience. And that's what he's saying to me here. He says, let thy head lack no ointment. You can buy ointment, you can buy for cheap. As a matter of fact, for me, my I I'm, I rarely, when I say rarely, I mean if if two months pass, I, three months could pass, I never even use a lotion. It's just like I have a lotion tube on my desk right here. I just picked it up. And months could go by, I never use it. I just have it there like it's for emergency. If I'm here and my hands are so dry, I feel like it's going to go crack. I had something. And, uh, you know, same thing in my bedroom. But... I don't like no ointment because what I really prefer to use, which I use on a daily basis now, is I use a mixture where I make myself and I get some sunflower oil, <laughs> some olive oil, I get vitamin D, vitamin E, um, I get tea tree oil and I mix it together, um, quite a few drops of tea tree oil. And I mix it because tea tree oil is very good for the skin, it's antiseptic, anti all kind of stuff. And I mix it, and that's what I use as my ointment for my whole body. From head to toe, I use that mixture. So I'll tell you again, it's a free mixture, and that's my ointment. I use um, primarily sunflower oil, a little bit of olive oil. Um, not, the, not the extra virgin, it's too strong in scent. Uh, but the tea tree oil can overcome it, though. And then I use some um, tea tree oil, and I use vitamin D, uh, liquid vitamin D that's suspended in um, in oil, and I use some vitamin E, and I shake that up, and then I use that, and I have a nice clean um, oil there. It smells clean, what I'm saying, and that's the ointment I oint. I anoint myself with that from head to toe. I use it for my hair. I use it for everything, <laughs> and that's my oil. That's my preferential oil. Now it might not be fancy to a certain degree but it's very healthy and that's the oil I use to anoint myself and to make my face shine because that's what you need to do so make you you know lack no oil you know you 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 can live your best experience you can go and buy you know especially when they're on sale essential oils essential oils can last you for years and you you make it sometimes I use some just a little bit of essential oil shake it up in a in a in a bottle with some water and you could add some tea tree oil for antiseptic purposes and stuff like that. And I'll sometimes just spray it over uh, like my bed and stuff like that to make it a nice scent. And then it's clean, not too much, um, just the water. And so to shake it up and just give it a nice, whatever, you can get some of these blends of like essential oil that is very fragrant because it mix rose and other things with it. It's just beautiful. So you lay in and you like you can imagine the butterflies. If you close your eyes, you can lay in bed. You can imagine the butterflies flying around you. I remember buying this blend one time that had like cinnamon and something else, and it's just a nice, earthy, natural, but just fragrant scent. And you don't have to be a lion. And when I say lion, what I'm talking about, you don't have to be a lion. Um. On in a sense of you have to have big money and stuff like that, you can just be a person as just a regular worker, and you can live your best life. You just have to understand this is your reality, and your reality is this, you know. And you just, as he says, we don't have to. You can live. We don't have to lack no ointment. 
You know, you just work hard and you enjoy the work of your fruit of your labors. Uh, live joyfully with the wife which thou lovest all the days of thy vanity, or I normally translate this because some translation renders it like all the days of thy life. Because this life is a temporal life. We just have a probation. You find Jesus, you make the best of this life. Um, and then we close our probation. So you just live your best life you can. Basically what he's saying, because it's not a permanent life. It was supposed to be permanent, but because of sin, it became temporarily. God has to reset at a little while from now. So notice here, live joyfully with the wife of you. Try to have your best experience with the one you love. Try to love more. You know, I'm always set as an aim that I can love my wife more. I set as an aim that I can be more kind. You said this is the aim. You know, I can be kinder. I can be more gentle. I can be more loving, more patient, more merciful. And you just attempt that. And you make a best effort. And even if you get knocked off your aim, you just keep pressing forward. And your experience would be so much better. Because why? It's 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 you want to enjoy the journey. You want to you want to know that when you see people, you know, breaking marriages, having terrible experience because of fights in their home, they're killing themselves and killing everybody else. You just want to have the best experience. So when you look at this context here, what he's talking about, you can be not just a living dog because that's not just what he's saying here. He's saying you can be a living dog that having your best experience, even better than a, a live lion, because a live lion, yeah. He might have how many women in his um, pack or whatever they're running. I think wolf running packs. And he could be doing, you know, killing all his animals and doing all that. Yes, I guess it's a good life. But you can have a great experience also. Just enjoy the wife of your life that you, you know, you have. Which you have give, which he had given thee under the sun. This is part of what the Lord Bless us with all the days of our life or vanity, for that is the portion of this life and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. So that's just part of the experience that we all go through or was originally intended for us to go through. Uh, that was the original intention of God. Not everybody have that experience per se, but that's the intention. Whatsoever thy hands find to do now, do it with all thy might. So if you're going to be a live dog, be, be it with everything you have. Give it your best. Notice here, as I say, you can live a life that you're living under a bridge by yourself, lonesome, depressed, you know, hooked on drugs and alcohol to take away your misery. Or you can be a live dog because that's a dog and he's alive, but he's living a miserable experience. Or you could be a live dog that say, no way, I'm going to fight out of this. I'm going to keep fighting and I'm fight every day so that I can have that clean linen. I can have some clean clothes. I can enjoy a wife. I can have some ointment on myself. And that's your experience. Now you have to do, you know, everything, gonna, you know, you can bum out and be a living dog. You know, you see the person on the bridge. If you're driving past a bridge today, that is person on there. They're alive. But you can say, you know, I could see. I guess you could say that they have, they have hope, because as I say, the living have hope. But they need to exercise that. You need to go from hope to action. As you know, you have to plant a seed for you to get a tree, for you to get fruits. So if a person is on a bridge, they're not planting a seed. They're not making an effort. So six months from now, a year from now, five years from now, they no, there will not be no fruits. So you have to say to yourself, what are you doing that you can get the fruit? If you're sowing misery in your house amongst your family, what do you think you're going you're gonna to reap? You're going to reap misery. If you're sowing good, then, you know, it might take a little while, but the good will come back. It'll come and sprout and it'll bear. It'll grow up and it'll bear blossom and it'll bear fruit. And then when you receive the fruit, you say, oh, praise the Lord. That's my work. I put in that seed. So you do your best to enjoy more. If you're enjoying your life with your spouse and with your children, if you have children, you can get more. You can enjoy more. You can have a better life. And if you have a better life, you can even get a best life. You can get better. It always can get better. Just always tell yourself that it can get better. And if it's good, it can get better. And if it's great, it can get better than great. And, um... If it does, just give me a call and give me a testimony. <laughs> so, verse 11 says, I returned and saw, oh no, so there in verse 10, towards the end, it says, for there is no work, 
you know, verse 10, the whole thing. Whatsoever thy hands find to do, do it all thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where the dog goes. So this is your time. This is your shot, man. Make the best of it. Because this is it. Notice there, I returned and I saw under the sun that the race is not for the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither bread yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happen it to them all. So time and chance happen to everyone. You know, there, there's things that happen to your life. You look back, you're like, it, it, you know, bad things lined up, but also good. You know, there's things that happen that you say, man, that was bad. And there's things that happen that you say, oh, that was good. That lined up nice. Time and chance. And you get your chance and you take it. If the chance, you miss it, it might never come back. So sometimes that's your chance. Sometimes a thought comes in your mind and you don't say, oh, man, I've been in so many situations that uh, something, I don't know if it's a flash of brilliance or a flash of, uh, madness, but something come in my mind, and I say it to somebody, and you know, a lot of time it 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 bombs the person like totally misunderstand what I'm saying, and they they even sometimes get upset, and then there's times when I see opportunity and I say something, or I do something or whatever, but I say something, and it it pulls off, it works, and the person is like, oh, you know, they're either so blessed or so happy or they laugh or whatever and it's that's my chance and then for, for forever if i say go to that store again and i see the person the person like happy to see me <laughs> and um and sometimes it works sometimes it don't work but sometimes it's a chance you take and some of the chance pays off and over the years it, you know it pays off and somebody like oh they remind it remind they remember you because of that one incident and so in life sometimes we don't venture we don't risk anything we don't take no chance and so you have to approach even your family like that. You know, sometimes it's okay for you to just say something nice to your wife. Just out of, out of the blue. Just, you know, take a chance. And it might work. It might not work. Just keep trying. You know, sometimes do something different. Um, make a plan. You know, I'm going I'm to plan so that we're going to live in a three-star, four-star dwelling. And you make an attempt. And if it work out, God bless you. Enjoy your dwelling. Sometimes you have to buy... 300 count sheets. Sometimes you're like, you know what happened? We're going to throw in a mix of 600 count cotton from Egypt. We're going to see what that's like. And you take your chance. You see what happened. And you go buy one and you enjoy it. You see, you know what happened? It's better we have two set of sheets or three. And they're all from cotton from Egypt. I like the feel of this. And you do your thing. If you don't like that, you probably prefer it where it's probably 300 is not as smooth you do the three, the three hundred. You know, it depends what you like. But you, you, you can do that because many people notice. I say they're in the beginning. They're more interested in the quantity, not the quality. But you could have quantity and quality. It just depends on what quality you like. But you have that quality. You enjoy that good life. You know, it, it. And you don't have to go broke doing it. You just have to know that says you're not doing. You're not trying to do the good life as a lion. You're trying to do the good life. As a dog. Now, if you have line money and you follow these principles, man, you know, invite me over sometime. You know, let me and get a little, even a few hours of the line life you're living with these principles. Because, you know, I've thought, I've learned over the years that when you have money, money gives you option, but it doesn't teach you to make good choices. I'm going to repeat that. When you have money, money gives you options, but it doesn't teach you how to make good choices. The more money, the more options, but it's not necessary, you know, to make good choices. So to me, it's nice to learn to make good choices by principles and especially without the concept of having too many choices and money, what money gives you. So that if you have money, you already know to make good choices. So more option is great if you know to make good choices. And that's what money gives you. Money don't make a person. It don't change your personality. It just gives you choices. Give you options. So if you go in the store to buy something, you can buy the cheapest. You can buy the most expensive. You can buy the middle of the road. And so what not having money do? Make you go read the reviews. And the review might say the best bang for your buck 
is the middle of the road. It's that one deer, that one particular product deer that probably cars cost half of the most expensive. Uh, you say, well, I have money, so I can buy the, the cheaper one. You're not buying the cheaper one because um, you have to. You buy it because it's the best choice. And it's, it's you know, so you say, well, that's not needed. You're never going to use it. You're like, you know, I've been, I'm always busy. I'm working. I might not ever going to use that product the way somebody that's always going to use it. You know, you might not, like, I'm not a professional. I'm not going to use it. Uh, but the professional we use is you don't buy the professional stuff. If you need a cam car, if you need a camera to record your vacation, you don't have to buy a three thousand or ten thousand dollar camera. That's for prof professional studios. You don't buy a hundred thousand dollar camera. You know what I'm saying? But when you have money, you could think, no, give me the hundred thousand dollar camera. And somebody think you're stupid. You're gonna lose that money. You know, so options don't mean you have to exercise the option. So yeah. So this is just a side note. But a living dog. It's better than a deadline. But when you read a text, you see saying, hey, do the best you can. You're alive. Enjoy life. You know, enjoy the living. You're going to go to a place where we're all going to go to. So until you get there, just enjoy the life. But there's people like, no, if I have to have a living dog experience, I prefer to die. See, those are dumb people. Because as I'm telling you here, you can have the best living dog experience that your experience is so great that a person that's even alive don't know to live like that. Because there's a lot of people are lying and they have to go to psychologists. They're depressed. There's a lot of people who are living like the dogs. They're living poor and they're very happy. Why? Because they learn to get the best out of life they can with what they have. The rich person, they're ungrateful. They don't know how to get the best out of life. At least some. But there'll be few that know to make good choices. But choices are just what it is. Now notice here. It is sure that the living lion is better than a dead dog. Right? That's what we say. You can say it's a sure thing. If you're a living lion, you know, if I'm, if, 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 you know, a lot of time you read the Proverbs, especially, you hear Solomon says, you know, it's better to live in a house stop that is, uh, in a, with, in a, with a leaking roof than to live with a brawling woman. You know, that he says that. But if you can have a palace and have a happy wife, wouldn't you take that? Yeah. It is, you know, great. I can have both worlds. So that's a given. But again, a living dog is 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 not per se better than a living lion. But no, I would say no. Here's my thinking. The way I think is that. But it also depends on what type of dog you are. Because there are different type of dogs, isn't there? So see that lion, what he was talking about, is that lion is out there. As I say, he has a harem. That's what they call it in, in the Middle Eastern world. You have a few wives, you have concubines, you have stuff like that. That's what the living lion has. He's hunting his food and, you know, that's what he does. He spends most of the day sleeping because he's always exhausted. He has a good life. All right. But it depends on the type of dog because there's different type of dogs. Now, you could have a guard dog. You know those dog, dogs, right? They're there and they're in that yard. If you go in that yard, they're going to try to make mince meat of you. And they could even kill you. So you could have that dog. That's, that's, that's you live in a kind of lion experience. So it depends on the dog. You could have a stray dog, and you know he's living on a bridge. He's um, do have a home. He do have nobody to feed him. He's just um, hoping for the mercies of strangers to throw him up some bone so he can eat, or get him some leftover food. Or giving them some, give him some change out of his pocket. So that's a stray dog. So the, that dog is definitely is alive, but I wouldn't say you can even compare him to that lion that is roaring. You could have a house dog, you know, a dog that is kept at home. He's he looks outside the window all the time. He barks at the squirrels that are going by and the cars. He's not even in the yard. He never goes in the yard. He don't worry about ticks. Uh, he don't worry about any type of stuff like that. Uh, he living a good life, you know. Uh, sad to say, sometimes he could even get to sleep in the bed of the owners. I don't know why. But that's a house dog. So he's living a good life. So then the question is, is the house dog doing better or worse than the lion? You see, this is a kind of question. A living dog now, I'm talking about. Because you're alive and say the lion is alive. Because there's people, as I say, will be depressed because they're not living a living lion experience. They're living just a living dog experience. And it might be great, 
but they're still looking across the road at the Joneses and they're getting depressed because it's like, man, I, I, I wish I could live that life. You know, I, I want to drive that Maserati, you know, and um, <laughs> I, I'll say this like, you know, when talk about house dog and all that, you know, you, you could, you know, they say there's two type of cars, right? You could drive a uh, car. How do they say you can drive a car that is. Uh, you can go through all the gears, you know, back in the time and here you have standard, five-speed, manual, five-speed and automatic, the, the two different cars. So you could have a supercar and by the time you go to gear, you know, gear number two, you had probably 80 miles per hour or 60 or whatever it is. Or you could have a five-speed car, small little, say, Honda Civic. And you could change all five gears all the time before you forget to 80 or 60. And you're having fun in it. And you even fly past people in Maseratis and Porsches and stuff like that. Or you ride on the tail. And you're like, okay. So, you know, there's people who be like, no, I can't be happy unless I get that supercar. My life is not of value. While another person be like, man, I'm having a great time in that, in that on the Civic. Man, I'm changing all the gears. I'm, I'm killing it, literally. <laughs> So it is that to me, which is like where I would say, you know, is really the person like I remember on a on a Nissan, um, Nissan GTR. I think it was to change the brakes when they are ceramic, uh, you know, drilled the brakes, whatever that brake is. It's like thirteen thousand dollars, thirteen thousand dollars. Now for thirteen thousand dollars, you get a very good used car, very good used car. And that's just the brakes. So somebody could say, well, yeah, but I wish I was that line that could buy the $13,000 brakes and buy the hundred and something thousand dollar car. Sure, it makes sense. And I think that's a number I could be off. But there's cars coming out now with $18,000 to do the brakes alone. Ceramic brakes. You can take it on a track, all that. Or you can just enjoy your Honda Civic and change the gears and go crazy in it. And I say that because I remember... When I just came to America, that was one of the cars I get to drive. And it was it was a blast because it was souped up and everything like that. Uh, you could rip through the gears and try to race Corvettes and stuff like that. Crazy. So when you look at that, so it, it's again, you just live your best experience. Because yes, you're not that lion, but you could be the house dog. You never see ticks. <laughs> you get your shots and get fed, um, you know, dog food and all that. Or you could be a yard dog, right? You just you just get tied up on a tree somewhere and they throw scraps to you. <laughs> and you live out in the yard, winter, summer, fall. You know, you spend Christmas in the yard. You spend New Year's in the yard. It's, you, that's your experience, right? And so somebody say, well, I can't be happy being a yard dog. And possibly so, but I'm just saying the yard dog needs to think, I need to get away from these people. I need to go next door and go to the house that they, they keep the dog inside. <laughs> I don't know how. But yet I think about that and you think about it, you think you say, yeah, Lord, but all the experience you give me in all those choices, yeah, it's good for the house dog. Dog, It's probably living his best experience. But then you think about it, about all those dogs, but you could be one of those fancy lap dogs. You ever thought about that? See, so somebody could say, well, how do I become one of those? That's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you how to. Because think about those fancy lap, lap dogs. A lot of times you see those fancy lap dogs. You see this, you know, young girl with one of those dogs or this female at the time. And she keep the dog, you know, always. Sometimes she even put the dog inside of her, 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 her jacket. Or she can have a little bag for the dog. The dog travel. And if she's flying first class, the dog is tra tra traveling first class. I hear about this person. It was a guy. You don't want to be uh, a fancy lap dog for a guy. But anyway, one of these guys that um, uh, he, I think he had paid for a seat for his dog. And some something went wrong and there was a problem on the plane. Recently, I saw it. I can't remember what happened. But I'm thinking, man, dog get a seat. <laughs> um, dog is doing well. I don't know if a lion out there is doing that well. Possibly, but I don't know if that, the lion. Probably. But do you see what I'm talking about? The point here, you know, uh, because I'm watching my time. <laughs> the point is, is that your experience can't, you could say, it's a dog, but you know, there's some people having some crazy 
dog experience, some dogs, I should say, you know, and they don't know what it's like to be a yard dog. That lap dog, you don't have a clue. He's inside all the time. He gets his, his, his shots. He don't have to worry about ticks. He's always in the lap, always somebody rubbing his head, feeding him, taking care of him. He's warm in the winter, cool in the summer. He gets to fly sometime first class. He sometimes gets his own seat on plane. Some people never even left their county, much less left their, their state, never flew outside of the country. He's flying around the world. He's having a great experience. I don't know if a lion that has to be fend off, fending off competition in the Serengeti in Africa, I don't know if he's having the same experience. I don't know if he have to deal with all these females and all that, and he's all, you know, have to be hunting and eating wild, wild game. I don't know if that's a bad experience. Do you? If you know, tell me. Contact me and tell me. So, again, you can have a good experience even if you're a dog. Even if you had, life is at the worst for you, so to speak. You just got fired. Things went wrong. So probably somebody passed away. But you're still alive. And you're going to say, you know, I bet I'm alive. I'm going to try to make the best of it. Because I'm a living dog. I'm going to experience the experience I'm going to have. Right here, right now. Wherever the experience is. Someone said, but what if you're in prison? What if you're sick? You just make the best of it. You fight. You have life. You hear me right now. You can do better. I'm going to talk a little bit about what you should do to do better. So, the you know, it's great to be. Now, if you could be a lion that have that type of experience, because there are some lions that are brought up in captivity, so to speak, and their owners treat them like they're a cat, literally just a big cat, and they got that great experience. Well, good for you. Uh, if not, you know, sorry. But if you do, praise the Lord for you. But you make the best of the experience you have, no matter what the experience is. And that's how it is. You enjoy life where you're at. I always believe in that. Just have the best experience where you can. And what we talk about is the best experience is varied. You know, some people's best experience is going out there, open up next 10 companies. You know, go start another company. That's their best experience. They enjoy killing it like that. Others, you know, they just want to bum out. I don't believe in that. I believe you get the best experience. Now in Psalms 34 verse 12 through 14, Psalms 34 verse 12 through 14 says, What man is he that desireth life and love it many days, that he may see good, keep his tongue from evil, and keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile? Depart from evil, do good, seek peace, pursue it. So you want good life. You make an effort. You pursue it. Um, if you want to have a great experience, no matter what state of life you're in, if you have money like a lion or if you're famous or you're intellectual giant or whatever, you pursue a good life. You sit down and think, how can I make it better? You, you pursue that. You make an effort. And every time you win, part of the good life, is actually the winning. It's actually accomplishing. It's actually making it happen. That's, that's part of the life. That's part of what God gave us. Part of our mindset, our psyche. Is that we go out there, we imagine, we create, we formulate, we make, we design, we redesign, we dress it, we stylize it to make it nice. And that's what you want to do. You have to think, how do I make this happen? How do I make this happen? You pursue that. Somebody else said, they're like, oh, woe is me. I was abused. Things happened to me bad. I was born in poverty, blah, blah. Let's think myself down by just, you know, baiting myself in drugs and alcohol because woe is me. Or, you know, I was seeking after fun. And whatever, you know, part of fun is actually go there and then go make some money. Go there, go build something. When you see what you build, you're like, man, that's the work of my hands. It's part of the fun. It's a satisfaction that comes in life to build things, to do things, to bless somebody, to help somebody, to be good to somebody, to say a kind word, to put a smile on somebody's face, to get a good belly laugh. When was the last thing you got a good belly laugh? You laugh till you almost you're, you're in stitches in your stomach. You like somebody, your, your muscles are in pain. You know that's a good thing. That's part of what he's saying here. Just enjoy the life that you have. First Peter chapter three. Verse 10, First Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it says, for he, that is, uh, sorry, for he that will love life and see good days, 
let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that that they speak no guile let him eschew evil and do good let him seek peace and ensue it so paul peter sorry basically quotes the same text it's the same idea the whole testament is rock solid you follow this thing you'll be good you you, you ensue peace so if you have a disagreement with your child you know you can wait until the child make it up with you you can go ahead and make it a write up you can say hey you know let's let's move on let's you pursue peace you don't sit there and just foment in sorrow miserable because you're you're pushing back the good times you're holding it off you be like my my life we need to get back to the good life let's go <laughs> let's go let's do it right that's it cuz you're hungry for it you want it you want the good life you want to have a good happy life you want a peaceful home you want clean house you want clean organized house you want good sheet bedding whatever you pursue it you like man we ain't go we ain't going to sit until we get this thing because we are alive no when you're dead all that perishes your desires your love your whatever but until you die hey man we going to get this so what we're trying to get here we're trying to get good health right so the things that we're trying to get because if your body is in good shape you can receive you see we are we we are receivers you know we we i guess we emit but we receive you know in my mind sometimes i i really believe this thing that our brain i think is some type of antenna don't quote me on that <laughs> but i believe that god can feed into our brain and there's probably a principle to it um that it's it just the message is sent back to the original antenna himself so if you look at this we we are, but we are, we are, we are impulse receivers you know we receive stimuli what what I'm doing here is a sound. You know, you form a certain sound and people understand what you're saying. That's language. So the sounds mean something. That's our our brains. We just receive. We receive scent. We receive um, vision, color reflection, or light reflection, and that's what makes us interpret what we see. We receive touch. Our ears receive the words, but those words. Okay, there, there's so much nuance and texture and layers to words. Uh, the speed the person said, uh, the, you can hear when a person is intense. You can hear when a person is not motivated. So when he says pursue it, what we are pursuing is that the stimuli we receive is stimuli that makes us happy, that makes us satisfied, that brings joy to us. And yet I know somebody say, yeah, but Lloyd, what you're saying here, I can get that with drugs. But I'm telling you, that's not how you want to receive it. That's like cheating the system. You don't do drugs, you do everything else. So you make your world become a world where you receive. It's like you hear me talk here. It's stimuli. You know, they've done studies that show that when you listen to like a motivational talk or a talk that is um, intellectually deep, it stimulates the brain. The brain lights up like a be like a bulb it, and it does something for us to make us feel good it, it's part of our experience we receive stimuli and it gives us a high they say that's what they literally say a motivational presentation or a deep intellectual presentation is literally like a drug to our brain so you need to get high on information and that will never you'll be hooked but you'll be positively hooked now you can get hooked on junk movies and junk books all this fictional garbage and you know, mess up your brain because what happened is is it's teaching you things that are not real but you get real you know that's why even when i do monday and i do this type of talk i, I keep it real what are we doing i'm mean, notice i always land back here what are we talking about here to have a good life as a even if you're a dog even if you're poor i've been giving you practical experiences so you can know how to stimulate receive the stimulation but never have to burn out the sensors. So that's why you avoid drugs and alcohol. That to me is a bigger issue. I don't want to. I want to be able to receive it. I want to be able to hear good words. You know, it's it's good. You know, uh, if you you approach me and say, "Hey, brother," or you say, "Pastor," or something. That's good words. It sounds good to me. Not the pastor part per se. Just the brother. I'm thinking this is my brother, and this person, I never knew them all my life. <laughs> I never, I don't know, they're from some different country, but yet they look at me as a brother. 
it's a good thing you know it, it is part of that type of thing where you know somebody give you an embrace somebody smile at you somebody shake your hand somebody give you a nod yesterday i was in, i was leaving from i think it's called bj's i was leaving from bj's Ose club and um i was parked parked next to a young man that has the same vehicle as mine and i was coming to my vehicle. he's look i see him looking at me i keep glancing he's looking at me because he has the same vehicle and then uh, my windows rolled down and then when i was about to drive because he was still in his vehicle i think he was waiting waiting for somebody i looked at him and nodded and he smiled and nodded at me <laughs> and i almost could i could burst and laugh because it's like he was he's waiting for that nod so i gave him the acknowledgement yeah we're driving the same vehicle and he smiled and he nodded and, I, and, and I, you know that was pleasant but we all looking for that type of stuff it's affirmation it's the it's like you know what i know because i know what he knows <laughs> so it's that type of experience that, you know, so when we talk about health, we're talking about mental health, talking about spiritual health, we're talking about whatever. But part of the health is that we're, we're, we're receivers, you know, we just receive stimuli. It's a touch, you know, the part of um, <laughs> torturing people that are in prison is to do, give them solitary confinement. They don't get to talk to anybody, don't get to see people there in a lockdown. And that drives the mind crazy because not only you're in a cage, I don't know about you, if you're claustrophobic, I can imagine that could drive you berserk. That's that's terrible and cruel and inhumane punishment. Because as human beings, we, we need embrace, we need affirmation, we need acceptance, we need touch, we need to hear good things. And we could get so dark that we shun those things and it messes with our minds. It makes us cold. We don't want to be cold. You want to be healthy in your finances. You want to be living the best financial life dog experience. You want to be great spirituality, not fake spirituality, not makeup spirituality, not a form of godliness, but true spirituality where you're touching eternal principles, you're understanding a God as the miracle working God, a God that is the deliverer beyond what man can do for you. You have the best mental experience where you are in touch with your feelings and emotions. You're not carried away by your feelings and emotion. You want to have a great social experience where your social life is the best. You know, you have good friends. You know, think about it. There's so many people that's going to commit suicide and they're lions. They have millions of dollars. They're not broke. They middle class. Some of them even poor, but they, they experience is miserable because they have no social experience. They have no friends. They don't have a church family. They don't belong. They're not part of the group. And for them, they decide. Hey, look, not only they're gonna kill themselves, but they're gonna kill everybody else because they're sad. We don't want to have that experience. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 10 and 11, Ezekiel 33, verse 10 and 11, it says, Therefore, O son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye, thus ye speak, saying, If our transgression and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? So we don't want to die. We want to live. Uh, we want to extend the life. We want to extend the quality. We want to improve the quality of life. We want to have a better experience. We want to have the best experience. So good that, you know, we probably have the house dog or the lap dog experience. We want to have the experience that even if we're not a lion, we have a great experience. Now, if you're a lion and you can have these experiences, make it better. Make it great. Make it rain, as they say. Um, receive the blessings that the Lord would have you to receive. Don't live a life of a sinner because life of a sinner is hard. It's just a tough life. No matter if they're rich or poor, you want to live a good life. As Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 says, See, see, I have set before thee this day good, life and good, death and evil. So see, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. We want to choose life. We want to choose good we want to choose the blessed way. We want to choose the Lord's way. When we choose that way, God will bless us. And we'll have a good life. No matter if you're rich or poor. That's the good part about it. You'll have the best life. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the blessings of knowing thee, the only true God. I pray, Lord, that we might be faithful to these things. That we might, dear Lord, choose to seek, to pursue, to ensue 
dear Lord, a good life. May you bless us, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you again live Monday morning where we should talk about motivation. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.